Welcome to our conversation today. We are discussing executive coaching, coaching and having a sounding board as a female entrepreneur and female business person. My name is Rosie Von Lila. My greatest passion is speaking with people in the interest of creating mass human flourishing. And today we're in conversation with Maeve Gillis. We give thanks to Tom McCallan for inspiring this and for be, being perpetually supportive of women in business. Tom is our mutual friend. He's an executive coach for the last 10 years, and he wanted to hear from us about how coaching has supported us in our lives as businesswomen. And so Maeve, I'm so happy to have this opportunity to speak with you. You have a really interesting story. I'm located here in Brooklyn, New York, and you lived here for about 15 years before your whole life turned in a different direction. You had a baby, you went back to Scotland. Would you tell us a little bit about that journey and what that time was like in your life? Um, hi Rosie, great to be here. Um, I, it's been a roller coaster. Um, I um, specialize in jewelry and I've done jewelry since I was 15 years old. I've worked and lived in five different countries, um, all to do with jewelry. And I finally launched my own business in Manhattan in 2005, specializing in unique kind of Celtic inspired engagement rings. Um, and so for the next 10, 15 years, I was based in Manhattan, traveling all over the US. Um, and I then got to a life stage where I was ready to, to reproduce, uh, not just rings. So I was having, um, I had my first child in Manhattan. We were there for a few years, um, but having been away from home for a long time and being very close with my family, um, I felt that it was important that, you know, my, and I was also expecting a second by this stage, that we'd be closer to my family. So we decided, well, my American husband, who's from the West Coast, we decided we would move um, to Scotland and holiday on the West Coast. So we, we made the leap. Um, my husband is also self-employed, was working in Brooklyn, had his own successful business there for 10 years. Um, so he was also having a fresh start. We decided to move right back to the little tiny enclave where I'm from in, in Edinburgh in Scotland, which is a wonderful place. Um, and I all my business was themed around this place, but I hadn't lived there for a long time. So the challenge of moving there with a young child expecting a second one um, to a new house with new childminders, new schools, new businesses. It was all moving galaxy of newness. Um, and at the same time, I was still um, creative director for the business that I was now working remotely from. Um, in hindsight, this was great because we didn't know the pandemic was coming and I was able to work remotely and continue that and selling directly online to consumers. Um, but it was definitely a personally challenging time. Um, another part of my goals had been to allow myself more space for other creative projects that I wanted to really focus on and to give more time for creativity um, as it you know considering myself to try and be this artist at mid-career stage what more do I want to achieve for myself it's not just about commercial it's about that balance with creativity so the move was for that and there were some other projects I was working on and at that time um, I was able to, to work with Tom in a series of sessions and he was super helpful to me um, and that's how we, we came to, to be talking about this today. Yes. Wow. So that was a time of huge transition for you, not only having a, a one young child, but about to give birth to another, going back to your homeland, uh, which is also uh, my ancestry is, is in part from Scotland and the other from Norway. So I have a, a fondness for the Scots. And, and not only you went from Manhattan, huge cultural center, tons of diversity, yeah. millions of people here, to how large is the enclave outside of Edinburgh that you live in? Well, we live just outside the city centre in Edinburgh. Um, well, Scotland is only about 5 million people and Edinburgh is less than half a million. Um, and our little area is, is, is very much, um, very localised, very small. I mean, it's not suburban, it's still kind of very green and, and very close, only 20 minutes from the city centre. Um, but it's still, you know, when you go to the play park with your kids, you run to somebody that you went to school with. And then suddenly the conversation is about oh, I went to school with you and now you have a kid. It's like you're somebody's mom. It's like the last 20 years didn't even happen. So it was a really interesting time and I had to kind of come to grips with that. And I was like, right, well, so if that didn't really happen, who am I anyway? <laughs> so wow. it was a really interesting thing. And you're just so busy with, with the children that even when you have child minding as well, um, it's, it, was, it was a lot to process at the same time. Just, just so much change. It's like, you know, you've been cut adrift like a boat that was suddenly out at, at mm. sea having previously had all these anchors and knowing where you were and everything was very much aligned um, and of course being back with family there's more family things going on as well so it was a, a, a very colorful time. 
Wow. And and so you did the very wise thing and, and got some support and had a sounding board in Tom. And I think that that's a, a, a really important thing for us women entrepreneurs and business women to have in our lives is somebody who can serve as a sounding board or guide us through a time of transition. Would love to hear what did you find um, in having a sounding board in general? How was that for you during that time? It was almost like a, I'm looking back now, it was, it's like a little gem through not a darkness, but just kind of a muddiness because, you know, when you've got a new kid and you're not sleeping more than two hours in a row at night and you have to get up and function normally during the day, there's so much pressure. And I think back as, as those kind of like being little lifelines um, and little moments where I was actually like switched off all the stuff outside, closed the door and was actually looking at myself for a moment. Um, and the feeling of being seen um, because I was kind of sucked into this vortex of everything else that required my attention apart from myself. Um, and, and the feeling of being seen and encouraged and recognized and uplifted and sort of, I, I guess, like value upheld um, by Tom was very, not just useful for me, but um, very much uh, an anchor, you know, when, when I was needing, was needing one. Yeah, getting uh, getting back in touch with yourself. It sounds like. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And and kind of just, you know, I am this person. Like I said, I work instinctively, so I make these choices instinctively. And you know, you work. It's something I would work towards for for years to make this move, but to actually physically do it and go through the process um, is a is a is a very different story. And it's it's something that there's so much pressure you know as women we take on so much uh, um, from family responsibilities to just the halo that is around everything else that we, that we do in our in our existence I feel we we, we carry so much on our shoulders um, and uh, I just really I, I just really valued the idea that, that Tom saw all of this and also wasn't shying away from it so it was very much that was what it is and let's see what we can work with in the middle yeah what would you say came out of having that sounding board? Um, what, what were you able to uh, you know, create out of that space where there had been lack of clarity before and then you had this anchor? What came out of that? Well, it's a self, self a reassurance of self-belief um, and uh, justification of what you're doing being the right thing. And um, definitely encouragement um, that takes you to a place where you just feel that it's the right thing to do to keep going and you're not constantly questioning where you are so almost like being able to feel like you're making progress even when not much progress is happening you know when you're still very much in the stage of of not much sleep and all these things it's it's like you you know you want to make progress but it takes so long um and yet looking back it flies by so when you know looking back i think it was definitely those those ports in a storm Mm, beautifully said. What was it like having, um, you know, having a man help guide you through that time? And what was distinct about that experience? Um, I think in some ways it, it's, you know, it made it even more special. I mean, as a, as a person, I have, you know, I, I count on one hand people that I consider to be true mentors in my life who have really changed my life trajectory through their input in which is the, the work I've done. Um, and I think just with, with Tommy has this, well, we'll say a man, but I think um, this, the, the sort of practical way of looking at the decision-making process that I had that was probably very frilly and definitely messy and um, very noisy and uh, cutting through all that because certainly speaking with close girlfriends um, and family, female family members, you kind of almost, well, I certainly do get stuck in a little bit of a pattern of you have like a certain way of discussing something with each character, depending on who they are and what they give to you. And, and they're your support network and they're your bricks that hold you up um, because they kind of, this is a justification of your existence and who you are within this circle of life, but to have, the kind of left field of a of a dude that gets it. Um, it was really it's it's really refreshing. And you know, obviously, my husband and I we talk things through. We have a different way of working through things. 
um, and with his friends or my other male friends, there's always a dynamic. But um, certainly I would say, you know, I think it's, it's really refreshing to have the opposite sex telling you with their opinion on what, what you're thinking of as being a challenge, because sometimes they really don't even, if they, they don't think it's a challenge at all, and if they can explain it to you in a way that is quite pragmatic and makes sense, it suddenly kind of evaporates and becomes less emotional. That, that's definitely something that I've learned through close business relationships with a couple of um, you know, guys that I've worked with um, that have been very useful to me in taking the emotion out of business. Um, mm -hmm because you know, you're so emotionally invested in your own business, especially when it's a creative endeavor anyway, you kind of pour yourself into it. So how can you not feel strongly? But I've learned along the way that the more you can take that emotion out, the, the more sensible yes. your choices will be, right? So it sounds like you benefited from having uh, someone who brought to the table some cognitive diversity different from yourself. And I also somebody outside of the normal conversations that you have and the normal conversation patterns that you have to give you some insight. I know what it's like to be so emotionally invested or attached to something. And it's great to have that, that uh, clarity of some outside insight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And, and interestingly enough, what was so fun, Rosie, was that Tom and I have known each other for years as part of this business network that we've both been involved with in Scotland. Um, and it's, it was so interesting that we were both making this life transition at the same time because Tom was moving from Cayman, he was coming back to the UK and both of us had been away for a long time and we were both kind of going through these big changes personally as well as in business. Um, and he really kind of opened my mind up to the idea of like professional friendship, which was something I just never really had before. I just thought of networking as something you did with people that, you know, I've always worked on this kind of like integrity basis where you kind of put the best of yourself out there and generally people that are like you kind of come around you and that kind of builds your business ecosystem. Um, but with, with Tom, it was like, yeah, you can actually have this professional friendship where somebody really gets down to the nitty gritty of what it is that you do and how they could help you and make that better. But there's not the emotional stuff of like being, you know, an emotional friend. So it's just like a, it was a really interesting thing. And we both, you know, he pointed out to me that that was something I had to build. Um, to kind of feel more supported, but, but very focused and, and kind of the ideas that I was working around being upheld. Um, well and that said. Was super, super value to me. Very well said. Well, we're gonna wrap up. Maeve, thank you so much for being here today. If you're interested in learning more about Tom's work, having a conversation with him, you can find him at tommccallum.com. I'm Rosie Von Leela. I'm at vonleela.com. And Maeve, would you share the name of your business and where people can find you? Yeah, Mavona is M-A-E-V-O-N-A.com -E and um, also my own business, Maeve Gillis, um, where I create my one-of-a-kind artworks. Excellent. Thank you so much, Maeve, and thank you so much for joining us today. If you're watching the show. Take care. Thanks, Rosie. Bye.